I've had a lot of requests for people to see more clock problems, so I thought I'd put together a couple of examples and show you here so you can come look at them when you need to. Um, here's a good example of a clock problem. Uh, you can see the time on the clock that we're looking for is 540. Specifically, I'm going to try to calculate the angle of this smaller angle created by the hands of this clock at 540. Okay? First of all, some basic things. The main calculation I need to do here is to find out how many degrees there are between each of the numbers on the clock. It's a pretty quick calculation. I know that there are 360 total degrees in an entire circle. You can see that the clock is being broken up into 12 different intervals. So I can divide 360 by 12, I get 30 degrees. That tells me I have a 30 degree angle between each of the numbers on the clock. Okay, so from a starting point, I can go ahead and label each of these angles here. And you can see that this interval here is 30 degrees. The second one is 30 degrees. The third one is 30 degrees. Or you could say that I have three times 30 degrees. Which is equal to 90 degrees. However, I'm not done. You see, the hand, the hour hand of my clock, is going to continue to move. And specifically, it's going to continue to move toward the minute hand. And I have to figure out, as my clock is moving through the hour, how many degrees has that hour hand continued to move? Okay? Well, if you think about it, the most it can possibly move over the course of one hour is 30 degrees. Okay? And we can see that right here. However, I'm not the entire way through the hour. I'm only partially through the hour. So, I have to figure out what fractional part of the hour I've currently moved through. Well, if you think about it, an hour has 60 minutes. It's 540. I've moved a part of the hour that corresponds to 40 minutes. So I am 40 sixtieths of the way through the hour. That is my part of my hour out of the whole hour. 40 minutes out of 60 minutes. Simplify 40 sixtieths, simplifies down to two thirds. Okay, so I am two thirds of the way through the hour, which means I'm two thirds of the way through this 60 degrees, sorry, through the 30 degrees between the five and the six on the clock. Okay, very simple calculation here. If you needed to turn it into a decimal by dividing it out, you could. But I'm going to do it with fraction multiplication because it's very simple. Two-thirds of 30 degrees means I'm going to take two-thirds times 30 degrees. Okay? Write that as a fraction over one. Two times 30 is 60 degrees. Three times one is three. I end up getting 20 degrees. Okay? Let's come back to the diagram and see what we have. What this is telling me is that this hand is going to move in 20 degrees toward the minute hand. So it's very important to use your diagram. Very important visualization here. The key though is the hour hand is going to get closer to the minute hand. And what that tells me is that I'm going to need to subtract that 20 degrees from the 90 degrees, degrees that I had originally. So the final answer here, I've got 90 degrees between the two hands if they're pointing at exactly the five and exactly the eight However, I have to subtract the 20 degrees, that two-thirds of the way between the interval between the 5 and the 6. I have to subtract that 20 degrees from the 90 degrees. And that's going to leave me with a 70-degree final answer. Hopefully that's been helpful to you. I put together a second example. My suggestion for this example would be to try the problem first, then come back and see if my solution matches yours. That way you can get a little bit of practice instead of just watching me do the problem. Uh, here's what we have with the clock this time. Uh, this time it's 350 on the clock. Okay, uh, Same kind of issue that we have before. And that is the clock has 360 degrees. So I'm going to take 360 and I'm going to divide by 12. And that tells me that each interval between the numbers is going to be 30 degrees. So I'm going to mark that. 
Uh, I've got 30 degrees between the 2 and the 3, 1 and the 2, 1 and the 12, 12 and the 11, 11 and the 10. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 intervals each of 30 degrees. So if I just had the hands freeze at each of the numbers, I could take 5 times 30 degrees, get 150 degrees, and that would be my angle measure. But we've got the same problem we had before. Unfortunately, that hour hand is going to continue to move throughout the hour, and it's not necessarily going to be pointing to the three by the time I'm 50 minutes through the hour. Okay, and in fact, it's going to be pointing nearly to the four, and it might be better if I'd even drawn it that, that way to begin with. Okay, so it's going to be very, very close to the four, but not quite there. So what I've got to try to figure out is how much of that additional 30 degrees between the three and the four does that hand move? Well, this is not a very tough calculation. The only thing that I have to find is what percentage, what part of that 30 degrees that hour hand would have moved through over the first 50 minutes of the hour. So I want to find out what fractional part of the hour I've moved through. Well, in the first 50 minutes, I have a part and a whole. I've moved through 50 sixtieths of the hour, which is 5 sixths of the hour. What that means is the hour hand has moved through 5 sixths of that 30 degree angle between the 3 and the 4. Again, with this clock originally being set at 350. Okay? So, I just need to find 5 sixths of 30 degrees. That's going to tell me how much this hand has started to move between the 3 and the 4. Uh, to find 5 sixths of something, easiest way to do it is to multiply the fraction by the number. So I take 5 sixths, I multiply by 30, uh, 150 over 6. That's what I end up getting here. Okay? And that ends up being 25 degrees. So what that tells me is this hand has moved, and keep in mind, it's going from the 3 to the 4. This time it's actually moving away from the minute hand. So this hand has moved 25 degrees from when it was pointing directly at the 3 at the start of the hour to now when it's pointing at the 4. Okay? So unlike the previous example, I'm not going to subtract that from the angle measure. I'm actually going to add it to the angle measure. So I have the original 150 degree angle measure. I have this new 25 degree angle measure. And you'll notice here, it almost looks like exactly a 180 degree angle. It appears to be straight, but it's just a little bit short of 4 o'clock, uh, at least the way a regular clock would work. Okay, so I'm going to take that 150 degree angle, I'm going to add the 25 degree angle, and we end up with 175 degree final angle. Okay, again, if you need more help, go back, watch the video again. I've got both variations of the problem on it. I think they're going to be a lot of help.